Hi, I'm Phil Molto, and welcome to another season of Snowmobiler Television. On today's show, it's all about what's new for 2017. We're going to meet with representatives from all four manufacturers. Are they going to give us the lowdown of what's new for 2017? Before we jump to 2017, let's go back to 2016 for the very best of last year's show. Twenty sixteen was a somewhat strange but incredible season for us at Snowmobiler Television. Our season got off to a great start with a recap of the twenty sixteen sleds. There were a lot of new models for us to review along with the OEMs. Each summer gives us time to reflect on the new models we see in the spring and then get ready to ride the following winter. At the start of winter, we were off to Duluth for the start of the ISOC snowcross season in November. The event was incredible as ISOC runs high energy events. While there, we caught up with Canadian racers who made the long haul to compete at this kickoff to the season. It's always nice to come here. Everyone's really anxious when we get to Duluth. so. It uh, sets the tone for the year, I guess you could say, before we start our attack on the CSRA series. Everyone down here rides at such a high level in the pro class that uh, it really kind of starts you out with a, a little bit faster pace, I guess you could say. So it's nice to do that, and it's always nice to represent Canada down here. As part of that trip, we also stopped in at the Top of the Lakes Museum in Michigan's Upper Peninsula. Inside the museum, we were simply wowed by the collection that has everything from all eras of this sport. Vintage prototypes, rare race sleds, popular family sleds, memorabilia, it was all there under one roof. We have 156 displays, 122 snowmobiles, and 51 of those snowmobiles are 1968 and older. When winter officially arrived, it did so with a very hesitant manner. Many regions we traditionally ride in were struggling for snow, and that meant we were on the road to find snow ourselves. The one place we always find snow, and lots of it, is Revelstoke, British Columbia. Our crew has been there year after year and has always delivered lots of the white gold. The depth of snow in this area of BC is always mind-boggling. On a nice beautiful day right after it's done snowing, it's such deep powder and so much that if you stop you have to crawl out. And, uh, it's, but it's very smooth, very nice and uh, there are groomed trails at the, at the hill but when you get into the back country and uh, in between the trees it's, it gets pretty dicey and it, lots of deep snow and it's, it's a lot of fun. It's great, I mean back home there's hardly any snow, it's totally different riding. Uh, you know, here the machines are different, the trails are different, the trains different than back in Ontario. So it's night and day difference between the two. End of the day, you're low. <laughs> <laughs> One trip to BC is always a treasure thing for our crew, but the opportunity to go back again was stellar. We were invited to join our friends at the British Columbia Snowbill Federation for their 50th anniversary commemorative ride. So the fact that we can pull off a ride like this, you know, starting from Kamloops and up to uh, Wells, Barkerville and back is, is a great culmination of the effort of a lot of clubs, a lot of people, a lot of volunteer time. And again, it would not have happened if we weren't able to put both associations together to make it happen. Most riding in BC is in one spot for the day, but this was a town-to-town -town ride spanning nine days on the historic Gold Rush Trail. <laughs> Along with the great friendships we developed on this ride, we also experienced a snowmobile convoy ride down the main street of historic Gold Mine Town. You're coming to a place with 154 years of history on 154 horses of power. Welcome to Barkerville. In the east where snow was not cooperating, we were there working alongside club volunteers who were trying to get the trails ready to open. What's that? I can get some mud on that slide if you'd like. Hi Muddy Phil. We're here on behalf of the Snowcrest Riders, uh, trying to break some trail open, brush the trail and pack it down. It's been a tough year for these guys. There hasn't been a lot of snow and or frost to get in the ground. 
there, there is a ton of work, especially this year. This has been the toughest year for the clubs, and I'm sure every one of the clubs will tell you the same thing. Lack of snow, lack of frost is a killer for these guys, and they're out there every day busting their humps to get this trails open for us to ride. So the volunteers are what make this sport go. Throughout the season, we rode our 2016 fleet of sleds, and we also got some Alka suspension work done courtesy of our friend John Sherrard at Accelerated Technologies. John was great at explaining how to properly set up your sled and make the proper adjustments to suit your riding style. The Alka Stage 4 kit he put on our Articat was a real hit with our riders. Good job, Phil. The 2016 season of STV had a lot of great moments from the powder to the trails and onto the racetrack. And now we are ready for 2017. Let's ride. TV is sponsored by Yamaha, revs your heart. Kimpex, fueled by fun. And by CKX, wear your passion. All four OEMs have exciting lineup changes for 2017. And here are representatives from the manufacturers to give you the lowdown on what's new. We launched two sort of significant new models this year, uh, the Sidewinder series as well as the VK540. Um, and so two completely different customers, but two needs that we had in our lineup that uh, were very well received by our dealerships. Uh, the new Sidewinder has just a copious amount of horsepower and it's something that really kind of gave a, a boost of energy to our, our dealer body. So we're really excited to get this Sidewinder on the snow. Well, I mean, we're saying that it has about 180 horsepower. Um, some people have found that it has even more than that. Um, that's what our baseline on its worst day it can do is 180 horsepower. Um, but it, it is certainly a really unique and innovative engine. It has triple throttle bodies, which is an industry first, um, but also almost an automotive first. Uh, there's pretty, pretty much no other turbo kit anywhere like it. Um, and the whole goal of it was to have uh, no lag. So when a snowmobiler hit the, hit the gas, it was that we wanted a turbo that had all the benefits of a turbo in terms of increased power, but there was absolutely no lag in when the, when the snowmobiler hit the throttle that it just took off like a shot. And our engineers, uh, being what they are, they were able to achieve that. So it was a very sort of promising um, development when we were able to get our, our leg over it and give it a, a first hit and see how it worked out and then of course as time went on we released it to the public and uh, it, was a, it was a great response. The key thing I think for us was that we launched it in um, I believe six different segments so RTX, LTX, STX, XTX, BTX and MTX. Um, so across all platforms this wasn't just one uh, customer niche that we were going for. We launched it a whole new class of snowmobiles with Sidewinders. So it was a really key for us that we got our dealerships all across the country the snowmobiles they needed. So we have 129, 137, 141, um, I believe a 146, and then a 162. There's no 153 this year in the mountains. Um, but basically, we're seeing a lot of uh, riders kind of. Um, the, obviously there's trail riders, but also there's this, the new cross uh, crossover element as well to go along with the mountains. So we just want to provide options for any type of rider that we have a snowmobile that's built just for them. And the new BTX series is actually something that's a response to that. We're seeing a lot of mountain snowmobile sales on the eastern half of the country, but what would happen is uh, the snowmobilers who were buying these mountain sleds, they wanted the, the extra track length and, the, and the, uh, the wider skis, but they would buy the snowmobile and then have to recalibrate the gearing and everything for a low level application. So we basically took um, a mountain sled, but then changed the gearing in the engine and that's what the BTX series is, it's called the Backcountry Snowmobile. So um, these are for these places in the East Coast and uh, Quebec, um, some of Northern Ontario too, that, and, uh, that really sort of 
need this sled. They want the look and the feel and the, and the, uh, the function of the mountain sled, but had to kind of do some after purchase modifications. So now we've just given them uh, the sled they want right out of the box. With the mountain application, um, that new engine is so powerful with obviously um, an ability to make it even more powerful aftermarket. Um, but the, the key thing there is that there is such a high power to weight ratio now that um, it mitigates any sort of weight issues, but yet maintains the durability and the reliability of a four-stroke engine in the mountains. And uh, as I mentioned before, the lag has now been severely reduced um, from a typical turbo application. This engine practically has no lag. And the elevation is no longer an issue in terms of um, a normally aspirated engine where elevation would play a role. Um, with this turbo now being a four-stroke, uh, that, you know, 180 horsepower or 200 horsepower is at zero elevation is the same as at 10,000 feet. So um, there's very little loss in terms of elevation. So we are confident that this, uh, this application and this, this um, Sidewinder MTX is gonna get a few mountain snowmobilers turning their heads and looking our way now just to see what it is and how, how good it works in the mountains. The RTX series is the shortest version that we make out of, out of 129. Um, it's basically built for those who are really aggressive trail riders. Um, the ones who are sort of um, putting in the good time on the laps and making sure they come across late in the day on a Sunday afternoon or something when the trails have been pretty beat up. They've got what they need to kind of continue to put down a, um, a, a fast run, but uh, more or less it's just a performance snowmobile for the trails. So um, that's kind of the main application for that. LTX is something with a little longer track, a 137, helps bridge some of those bumps, um, handles very well. Uh, LTX is pretty much one of our high volume models that our customers are seeming to be uh, the preferred sled for them all. Uh, 141, that would be more the XTX versions. Um, that's more of a crossover sled. Uh, a little extra footprint so that it's um, a little bit better in the, in the deep snow. Um, the STX DX versions are more of, a, of an off trail touring. Uh, they come with bags and a higher windshield if you're going to put on some big kilometers. And then of course we get into the mountains after that. So. Um, a lot of key models, we, like you said, we wanted to make sure that we are well represented across the board with a completely new class of snowmobiles. Well, the biggest news is the transformation for the Assault, the Voyager and the Arm case in the 144 segment. We're just going over to the Axis chassis with a whole new suspension and new running boards. So that's the main big news for us this year. The mountain section uh, pretty much stays the same. We add on an extra machine and it's the Pro Arm K174, which is basically the same as the 155 and the 163, but we fiddle a little bit with the suspension so we moved it back. So it's going to be uh, pretty much feels the same as driving the 163 out of the snow, but takes you a bit further. How we look at it and think about it is that if, if you want to do the real uh, steep climbs and real uh, just powder snow, you go for the pro segment. If you want to do the little more, go both on and off trails and, and get a machine that works more in every situation, you go for the SKS with the better cooling and all. And if you want to do the really tough jumping and uh, out of cliffs and stuff like that, you go for the assault. So that's pretty much what same machine in the in the basics, but you, we added on strength to either the SKS or the Assault or the Pro RMK for different types of styles of riding. Good thing about the new Assault is that it improved both on trail and off trail. So it's a huge difference. You can go really fast and, and it feels really smooth on trail, but still it performs so much better off trail. So it's like a I guess you can call it a miniature Pro RMK almost <laughs> in, in the deep snow, so it works really good for us. Took the rush and fiddled with it, so we, we made a com combination between the S model and the X model and put some racing stuff on to, onto it. So we got the Rush 6 and 800 XCR. That's pretty much top of the line when you want to go fast trail riding. The Pro S is, um, also comes in both 6 and 800. And the Pro S sits a, bit, a little bit lower, so it's uh, supposed to be better for cornering than the Pro X. Pro X is a little bit tougher on the, on the suspension side, so that's for more if you want to go both on and off trail. And the S is more for trail riding because it sits lower, it corners better, and, but you still get the same uh, engine options both in the Pro S and the Pro X, so 6 or 800. 
it's a big lineup. You got you got everything from extreme trail riding to extreme powder snow. So so the best way if if you go into the dealership, you talk to to whoever owns it or the sales rep, and, and kind of he can guide you through. Depends on what type of driving you are going to do. He's going to guide you to what machine you need. And then when you're after the right machine, you can you can just do I need a 600, 800, what suspension package, and so on. So we got a really wide lineup for all types of customers, all types of riders. Well, I tell you what, it's, it's really an exciting year in 2017 because of the new motor and because of the new chassis. Uh, I don't know where to start on that whole thing because they're all it's, it's it plays together so well. I mean, they were engineered together for a reason. So there's no compromise in the engine and no compromise in the chassis. They work and play together extremely well. When you look at the chassis, there's nothing it shares with the previous Rev chassis except the name and the concept, the pyramidal concept on it. So you got a new cast ball kit on it. You got new engine bay on it because of the new motor, obviously. You got a whole new tunnel. It's a beveled tunnel. It's a, a new heat exchanger system back here. It's all together redesign and the idea is maximum performance. The new engine's fantastic. It's the first thing that everybody notices because you start it up and you grab a handful and holy cow, instant response. It hits like a sledgehammer. I mean, it's really, it's just, it's got some real big power behind it and very noticeable. Torque is up, power's up. There's nothing bad about that. We've addressed the meat of the market without a doubt with the new, new snowmobile. The, uh, by putting it in the summit, we're addressing the market, mountain market in a big way. 850 cc's out there, 165 horsepower. Those guys are going to love it. But the best part about it is the snowmobile is even more easy to ride. So it's about being effortless out there and that's what we've really delivered is an effortless ride for that mountain guy. The fuel economy is the same as the 800 hour E-Tech. So I mean that's great news. On top of that, the oil economy has improved a ton. We're at 600 uh, E-Tech levels with this. So you've got more power, more torque, more responsiveness, and you're burning the same amount of oil as a 600 E-Tech. To me, the Rotax engineers have really done their job extremely well. The reaction has been so positive, it's unbelievable. I mean, it, it, it's easy to control it when you need it, but when you ask for the power, it's instantaneous. And it's, it, comes in all the, the, it comes in a huge amount if you want it. And if you want a little bit of it, you can modulate with the throttle. It's just it's phenomenal. I mean, the smile that people see from ear to ear, when they come back, they're smiling like they've never smiled before on a snowmobile. The kids in a candy store, how else can you describe it? For 2017, Arctic Cat would like to think we have a full line of engines for all our consumers. On top of the food chain is our new 9000 series. It's the brand new 998 triple cylinder turbo. This thing is a 180 horsepower rocket ship. So the brand new 9000 engine is available in a few new chassis. Um, one is the ZR, and guess what? We brought back the Thundercat name, that legendary horsepower name from the 90s. You know, we wanted something that triple cylinder engine what better name to have than the Thundercat? 180 horsepower. Like I said, this is our fastest snowmobile. You know, we've been busy uh, this year. In the mountain segment, we've lost six pounds across the board, and we're doing that without sacrificing durability. One of our newest models is the Mountain Cat, and this thing's made for your hardcore backcountry rider, guy that wants the steep and deep big powder. Uh, that comes with a three inch power claw track. Uh, we did things like narrow up the running boards, move the rider forward two inches, and then the weight loss, this thing is a definite backcountry machine. So the crossover market is growing for Arctic Cat, and we have at least three options for people uh, in that category. If you want to ride strictly trails, we recommend the Cross Tour. Uh, that's more of a, a touring, kind of longer track. Uh, if you want to get off in the snow and play, you can do that. We also have our high country models. That's the other end of the spectrum, which is more oriented to the Midwest rider coming out west, you know, several times a year. Taller lug track, gets to play off in the mountains a little bit, but still wants to ride the trail. Uh, in the middle of those is our cross country models. Like I said earlier, this is a great handling machine on the trail as well as off. So for 2017, Arctic Cat introduced a new segment 
It's the SVX 450 snow bike category. So we introduced this model. It's a 450cc EFI four-stroke engine. Um, it's, it's a new category for Arctic Cat as well as the industry. Um, the snow bike category isn't going to replace snowmobiling, but it is going to bring people into the sport that uh, may not have been here before. And we're really excited to have this bike around. Welcome back to our Snowmobiler Television Shop and Garage. Jeremy Gerard is here today from Kimpex to give us an overview of Kimpex. Who started it, how, and why? Kimpex started in 1967 by Mr. Gilles Soucy and as a redistribution company for uh, the snowmobile industry. And today it's evolved, uh, in, we're in our 50th year, and uh, we're a major manufacturer as well as distributor. 50 years? What have they been distributing over 50 years in the industry? Well, we've distributed everything from tracks to suspension parts, um, idler wheels, all the way through to a full line of uh, clothing and accessories. Over the years, a lot of us have gone through our stuff. We've gone through a few sets of helmets, a few sets of suits. We've gone through recoil ropes, bulbs, and Kimpex has always been there. We have. We've, we've been a, a major player in this industry as a proud Canadian company for a long time. And today, things have changed because there's more than one way to get those Kimpex parts. Yeah, so we've got a new online site called Kimpex.com, which allows the consumer to basically go online and shop and all while supporting their, their local dealer. So this year, everything you're wearing out, if you need things, if you've broken it or worn it out, they can go to Kimpex.com. We use Kimpex products all season long and we'll see you using those Kimpex products on the trail. TV is sponsored by Yamaha, revs your heart. Kimpex, fueled by fun. And by CKX, wear your passion. Thanks for joining us on today's show. I hope you're as stoked about the 2017 as I am. On next week's show, our test riders, well, they're gonna jump under the seat and give you their perspective on all the new models for 2017. We'll see you next week back here on the snow. Arrest that man! Mm -hmm.